Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Empowerment with Elizabeth. Today I am here with my sweet new friend Ashton. And she is going to talk to us about her platform of agriculture, 4-H, and FFA. So Ashton, tell us a little bit about yourself. So as you've heard, I'm Ashton Helms, and I'm Miss Klamath County's teen. And if you don't know where that is, I'm in the southern part of Oregon. And a fun fact about us is we're known as the City of Sunshine because we see the sun almost 300 days of the year. I love it. My love it. community service initiative is 4-H and youth, and it's just talking about leadership and what 4-H has to offer. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. So talk about, you know, um, why you decided to choose agriculture as your CSI. Yes. So I chose to choose agriculture as my CSI because I came from a family of ranchers and farmers, grown up in it since I was tiny. And I started showing animals in 4-H when I was in the fourth grade, and I just fell in love with it from the beginning. I loved showing animals, and I loved what 4-H had to offer me. I learned so much through 4-H, and I'm so sad to part with it because, you know, this was my last year showing and getting to experience all it had to offer. So I decided to become a 4-H leader so I could share my experiences and how amazing 4-H was for me. Because not only was I just a 4-H member who showed livestock, I showed every animal you could probably think of. But I also did stuff like Legos and I did knotting projects and baking projects and I did public speaking. And I was a 4-H ambassador for quite a few years. And I even got to go represent our state of Oregon at this little like leadership get together for ambassadors at the Oregon State University one year. I love it. I love it. So, um, so talk about, you know, what the biggest issue that you see is with um, agriculture education, because, you know, um, you don't see a lot of, of, you know, kids going into college saying, you know, I want to be an agriculture major, I want to be um, a farmer when I grow up. So talk a little bit about, you know, what that looks like in your state and what you see as the biggest issue um, in agriculture. Perfect. So actually, one of the biggest issues facing agriculture in Oregon is we're having bills that are going against farming and ranching and our livestock producers. And it's actually, if this bill goes into place, it will affect having, you know, butcher plants and having humane, like, having humane ways of getting meat in Oregon, and it'll put a pause on breeding livestock and the animals that produce the meat for us. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that faces it on like the ag side is not, or when you get into ag education is here in Oregon, we are a big ag state. But when you look like on a further spectrum, FFA isn't very big at most schools. Mm -hmm. I know quite a few schools in our county their FFA program either died or, you know, they don't have anyone to lead them on. So it's just there. Mm -hmm. And there's not a whole lot of agricultural colleges when you look past high school and middle school. And I personally have experienced it because I'm going into animal nutrition. And so it is so hard to find a college that has a good animal nutrition program or one that you know, focuses on what you want to focus on. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I have a degree in people nutrition, not animal nutrition, but, um, but yeah, I have a degree in nutrition. And so, um, that was kind of what introduced me to my platform of food insecurity. And then adjacently kind of agriculture, um, you know, I grew up in the city in Dallas, Texas, so I wasn't around farms and my high school did not have FFA or 4-H, um, so it's interesting to hear, you know, you talk about how that's such a big part of, you know, your high school, but there are high schools that don't have it. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's something that I wish I would have been able to be a part of in high school because it, it really is such a great leadership organization. And I feel like it's a lot like pageantry in a lot of ways because yes. you do learn so many great skills that are applicable for the rest of your life. So that's awesome that you had a school that, um, you know, provided that for you guys and that, you know, allowed you guys to be involved in that. So I'm jealous. (laughs) 
Um, but talk about, you know, what the connection is between, um, you know, agriculture, which is what your platform is, um, mm-hmm. and food security or, you know, hunger and poverty. So one of the biggest issues I personally believed is between like where ag overlaps with food insecurity is the fact that when we go to buy food in the store, you know, we're not thinking of the farmer because we don't buy locally from grocery stores, but grocery stores advertise that it is sometimes. But also, you know, we import a lot of our important like foods and ag commodities, like we import haze sometimes for our animals. And, you know, if you can't get the hay that you're importing, you can't feed the animal that's going to move on to feed you. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the issues that affects my community and mine is because um, the Klamath and Lake County, we have water rights issues. And that means, like, we have a lot of problems getting water to our farmers and our local farmers. And we're also known as a drought community. And that affects us greatly because if you don't have water, you can't grow the hay, you can't grow the corn, you can't grow anything, you can't feed anybody, you can't water anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is like a trickle down effect almost. I actually Mm -hmm. got that question in my last interview to get my local title this year, which is Mm -hmm. so funny that you brought that up. And they were like, you know, what is your what are your thoughts on like the chain of command and how Mm -hmm. things overseas will impact that? And I was like, that's actually a really big issue and and not even necessarily, you know, um, with, you know, just specifically this year, but really anytime there's like a government mm-hmm. shutdown or a big event happening overseas, you know, um, because like you said, you know, our, our food comes from a farm inevitably. And so if we can't feed the animals that are providing us our food, um, you know, and equip them with what they need, then um, that does affect what's you know, shelved and put on the market for at grocery stores. So you're so right. You're so right. Um, That's why we went into the potato famine. mm -hmm. That's a great thing. Yeah, exactly. You're so right. Um, It's not just something that's new. It's, it's been going on for forever. Was that the the 1700s, 1800s? I wish I was. (laughs) I wish I could tell you exactly when it was, but I know I'm like, I'm a STEM girl. I don't know my history. That's so bad. Um, but talk about, you know, some of the bills you, you were talking about, you know, bills that are, you know, specifically um, negatively targeting farmers. So talk a little bit about those. You know, I know that there's been the big push recently for mental health um, advocacy for farmers because mm-hmm. um, you know, I was talking to a girl in Arkansas who has a similar platform to us. And she was like, you know, something that people don't realize about farmers is that they don't get a day off. You know, there's there's always crops that have to be tended to. There's always animals that have to be tended to. So um, they a lot of times have really bad mental health. So Talk a little bit about some of the bills that you were mentioning earlier. Currently in Oregon, there was a Senate bill uh, 526, which it was from quite a bit of time ago, but it came into effect like crops Mm -hmm. and stuff with the USDA, but it mainly happened because of COVID. And it was just like, should we not? you know, test the soil to see like what pH levels we have and what we can actually grow here because, you know, they were, we were in COVID. So it was killing like the social interactions we get between the people who test our soils to see if we can grow the specific crops we're trying to. And, you know, the people trying to grow your crops for you. Yeah. And I wish I could remember off the top of my head, the one that is going to come into a big play if it, goes through because you know my grandfather runs a grass-fed butcher plant and so if it comes into play he won't we won't be able to butcher animals here in Oregon at all we'll have to send them out of state just to even get butchered yikes yeah that's not ideal obviously for him oh goodness no it'll put most of our families out of out of that was a thing oh my gosh Interesting. So it's actually called that. it's IP three, and it's um yeah it's gonna go against trapping and hunting and killing animals for food, and it's gonna put a pause on like our agriculture education and the research we have on animals, of course. 
Mm. Yikes. I didn't even yes. know that was a thing. I'm glad you brought that up. I need to check if Mississippi has that. I might and need to do some advocacy will, work. <laughs> not only will it affect like agriculture and stuff like the livestock side of it, but it'll affect like milking places like the mm -hmm. dairies. Because if you're going to be milking, it's going to be, you know, you're, they're going to say that you were harming the animal in some sort of way because it's almost like sexual assault practically towards an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know that was an issue. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, well, thank you so much, Ashton, for coming on and, you know, uh, giving me some great knowledge and um, kind of giving us an overview of what the world of ag agriculture looks like right now and how mm -hmm. FFA, FFA and um, 4-H and all these awesome organizations are, um, you know, so beneficial to our society and to youth in general. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. And I will see the rest of you guys on our next episode. Bye, y'all.